the Crafting DM. Greetings, Earthlings. Today in this episode of Dollar Store Chop Shop, we take a look at how you can convert some $1 toys into some pretty neat sci-fi scatter terrain. All you need is some cheapo toys from the dollar store, a $1 package of crazy glue, and whatever tools and paints that you have on hand in your supply. Jumping right in. First I opened up each package and plucked out the choice pieces that I thought might be useful. At this initial stage, I had no idea where I was going with this project. I was simply identifying some useful pieces and setting them aside. It is fairly easy to pull apart these dollar store toys with little effort. If you have seen any of my previous Scatter Terrain videos, you know that I love to save the plastic packaging to use as potential molds for stone casting in future projects. So I was sure to take a close look before I went ahead and tossed these into the recycling bin. I thought the top of this tank would make a pretty cool electrical box of some kind. And the weapon portion would probably make two pretty good antennas. Antennae? Antennas? I don't know. Each package had at least one useful part, so overall, this trip to the dollar store was pretty successful. This fuel tank snapped right off. I had plans to repurpose it as is and just simply repaint it. The base portion had great texture and I wanted it to be visible in a separate piece of scatter. I really liked these mech weapons. I knew they would make perfect gun turrets. What was great about this haul was that the pieces required very little modifications prior to assembly. To base this sci-fi terrain scatter, I used some basic 1-inch tiles from Hearst Arts Mold 273, Pipeline Floor. Once I had some ideas in my head and some parts in my hand, I began to prep all the parts for gluing. To do this, I used a file set to file off any unwanted irregularities, a basic drill to make a few holes, and wire cutting clippers to separate any stubborn pieces of plastic. I hoped the cement mixer from the construction pack would make a nice body for my automated turret bots. Prepping them up wasn't so bad. I used wire cutters to clip off the unwanted pegs, a file to sand it down a bit, and a drill to drill a hole on each side. The drill pushed through the soft plastic easily. I had to go back over the drilling once with a larger drill bit to fit the gun turret pegs into each side. Most of the cheap plastic toys from the dollar store can be bent to shape however you'd like, so feel free to bend them up a little bit to fit your model. I had to cut a large peg off these rockets, so after doing that, I filed down the area where I made the cut. I wanted this fuel tank to sit on a flat base, so I took a little time to clean up the bottom so that it would lay nice and flat. After chasing down the piece of rifle that I clipped off, which flew across the room and landed on the floor, I used a file to file down the jagged part. My plan was to use this rifle barrel as an antenna of some kind. Like I said, I planned to use the top of the tank to make an electrical box of some kind. The problem was, it had a hole on either side of it. I could only cover one up with a makeshift antenna, so I thought maybe these wheels would work well to cover up the other side. To prep the fuel tank base, I simply peeled off the sticker and filed off any of the gooey leftovers. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, all pieces in this build, aside from the cast stone base portions, were glued using a $1 tube of crazy glue from the dollar store. It bonded surprisingly fast and well, and the pieces turned out great. Once I had all of the pieces prepped and ready to go, I primed them all with a coat of Army Painters Matte Black. All in all, this video really isn't a tutorial on painting. There are far better painters out there, and you can find tons of tutorial videos on YouTube, which I would encourage you to go explore and watch. 
To begin, I painted each base with some metallic paint to bring out some of the cast metal details. This is a brushed dark gray color brushed metal metallic acrylic paint from Folk Art Paints. I used a lighter brushed silver metallic paint for the other metal portions of this build. The fuel tank is primarily done with a coat of white paint, and then some touch-ups with Citadel's Ethonian Camo Shade and some other shades of Mocha Brown. I was going for a worn, weathered look. After touching up the metallic portions of this build with some Citadel's Dry Necron Compound, I began to glue the pieces to each base. All in all, I was pretty happy and a little surprised with the way this dollar store chop shop turned out. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.